Could members of Toronto East York Community Council please come to committee room one? And yeah. that means it's on. If I could ask members to take their seats. <laughs> Councillor Matlow, if you could take your seat. Good morning. Could I ask the room to come to order, please? No, I don't. Want so, we're all in our seats. Very good. I'd like to call the meeting to order. The chair and members gratefully acknowledge that the Toronto East York Community Council meets on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Are there any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none, can I have a motion to confirm the minutes of the November 5th meeting? Councillor Cressy, all those in favour, opposed, carried. So, members, we begin our agenda clearing with item 21, which is on page 52 of the orange sheets. Item TE 11.21, appointments to business improvement area Boards of Management. Councillor Cressy, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.22, assignment of the ceremonial name Karen Kane Way to part of Queen Street West. Councillor Cressy. I'll move the staff recommendations, well earned and well deserved. All those in favour, opposed, that carried. <laughs> be a little bit beyond our abilities, I suspect. <laughs> Item TE 11.23, Gerard Carlaw Planning Study Update Report. I'll move the staff recommendation, Chair. All those in favour, opposed, that carries. Item TE 11.24, 17 St. Andrew Street Zoning Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Councillor Layton. I realize for this item, my staff may have not sent the expanded notification area. So we'll hold that in your we, name. I, oh, it sounds like they did. That's oh. great. Thank you. And I'll put that amendment on the screen to expand the notification area. So, so we'll, take, that, we'll take the amendment and the item the together as one. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.25, 145 Wellington Street West, 55, 53 and 55 Simcoe Street, Zoning Amendment Application Preliminary Report. Councillor Cressy. I'll move the expanded notice, please. So we have the expanded notice. 
We'll take that and the item together. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.26, 117 through 119 St. George Street, Zoning Amendment Application Preliminary Report, Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'll move the staff recommendations. Okay, on the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.27, 363 through 391 Young Street and 3 Girard Street East Public Art Plan. I note that Councillor Wong Tam isn't here yet, so I'll hold that in my name. Item TE 11.28, designation of fire routes and amendment to Chapter 880 fire routes for six, Vista, six Park Vista. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much. I'd like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.29, construction staging area time extension 159 Wellesley Street East. I know I'll hold that as well. Item TE 11.30, construction staging area 462 Eastern Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, yes, I have a uh, motion there, Mr. Chair. Amendment. Move that. Okay. So with that amendment, we'll take that in the item together. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.31, installation removable, removal of on-street accessible parking spaces, October 2019, delegated. I'll move that. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.32, commercial boulevard parking appeal, 170 Bedford Road, fee calculation and alternative use option. Councillor Layton. You need to hold this item down, please. Thank you. Okay. Item TE 11.33, realignment of permit parking area 9A to exclude the development located at 276 through 294 Main Street and 144 Stevenson Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thank you. I'd like to move the staff recommendations, please. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.34, extension of permit parking hours, Felstead Avenue between Monarch Park Avenue and Park Mount Road. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, yes, I would like to defer that to January, please. We'll defer that to the January meeting. All those in favour, post carried. Item TE 11.35, residential on-street Permit parking status update on the expansion of on-street permit parking in the Toronto East York Community Council area. We have deputations on that item, so we'll hold it for deputations. Item TE 11.36, parking amendments Cavell Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. And I'm also sending that to January, Mr. Chair. Defer till January. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.37, parking amendments, Carolyn Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. Same thing. Defer till January. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.38, parking amendments, Pape Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. Just move the staff recommendations. On the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.39, parking amendments, Riverdale Avenue. Councillor Fletcher. And I'm going to refer, that's going to January too. Defer that till January. All those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.40, parking amendments, Strathmore Boulevard. Councillor Fletcher. Move the staff recommendations. On the staff recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. A request from the TTC, actually. It's very generous of you to take the TTC's Absolutely. request. Absolutely. We're in good form today. 
Item TE 11.41, Vehicle Width Restriction, First East-West Public Lane, North of King Street and West of Bright Street. It's Councillor Wong Tam, so I'll hold that. Item TE 11.42, Safety Improvements, Gerard Street East and Pembroke Street. I'll hold that as well. Item TE 11.43, Pedestrian and Traffic Safety Review, Sherburn Street. I'll hold that as well. Item TE 11.44, Toronto East York Collector Road Speed Limit Reductions as part of Vision Zero Strategy, or sorry, Speed Management Strategy. Can we hold that down? Hold that for Councillor Cressy. Item TE 11.45, Traffic Signal Controls Old Weston Road and Rockwell Avenue. Councillor Layton. 45. Yes, thank, 45. I'm sorry, 45 is not on my little uh, cheat sheet here. 45 or 46? 45 is mine. Oh, Councilor yeah, Bailauer. Okay, so our very first error of the day. May it be the only one. Councilor uh, Bailauer. Move staff recommendations. On the staff recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.46, Traffic Control Signals Bay Street and Scollard Street. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. St uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to um, move the staff recommendations and thank the clerks very much for entertaining a couple of deferrals on this one. Um, the staff are actually recommending the installation of the pedestrian crossing in this location. Staff are recommending one. They are recommending one. Uh, just so looking thank, over at them. Thank, well. thank to them. The way this started wasn't a letter from a community association, a letter from my office, a petition, and all of that. Get this: a phone call to 311, and that was the genesis of this. And it was like five years later, staff are recommending it. So we rarely see something like this, uh, but I'm happy to pass the staff recommendations. I'll vote for that one with glee. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 11.47, mid-block pedestrian traffic control signals Queen's Park Crescent West, Queen's Park. Councillor Layton. So I, I would actually uh, appreciate holding this down um, so Councillor Wong Tam could be just be here for it because I know that she ha helped initiate this and it is a rather significant um, a public safety initiative. Yes, it is. I just want to give okay. her credit when she's in the room. So we'll hold that. TE 11.48, Allway Stop Control, Cedarvale Avenue and Holborn Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move the alternative recommendations to authorize the installation of Allway Stop Control. Okay. On the alternate recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.49, Allway Stop Control, Eastwood Road and Gainsborough Road. Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Again, I'd like to move the alternative recommendations to authorize the installation of all-way stop controls. On the alternate recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. TE 11.50, all-way stop control, Lyle Avenue and Osborne Avenue. Councillor Bradford. Thank you very much. Uh, thematic here, alternative recommendations. I'd like to move for the installation of all-way stop controls. On the alternate recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.51, oh my goodness, Allway Stop Control, Westlake Avenue and Doncaster Avenue, Councillor Bradford. Not done Let me yet, guess. Mr. Chair. Yeah, alternate recommendations to authorize the installation of Allway Stop Control. On the alternate recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.52, Allway Stop Control, Westlake Avenue and Westbrook Avenue. I'd like to move the alternative recommendations to authorize installation. All All the alternate recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.53, Traffic Calming Speed Humps, Lachelle's Boulevard. Councillor Matlow, item 5.3. <clears throat> 
I, uh, I'm going to move the motion to uh, skip the polling and approve the uh, speed humps. Okay, so waive the polling and install. Okay. We have uh, we have we have uh, 80, 84 percent of the households already in favor. Take your word for it. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.54, traffic calming speed humps, Milverton Boulevard. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I'm going to move the alternate to install. Okay. On the motion to install, all those in favor, opposed, carry. <clears throat> Item TE 11.55, speed hump poll results, College View Avenue. Councillor Matlow. I'm moving the alternate recommendation to approve the humps. So on the alternate recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carry. Item TE 11.56, permanent closure of a portion of the public lane extending between 178 and 179 St. Clair Avenue West. Uh, is that? Councillor Bailao. Approve staff recommendations. On the staff recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. <laughs> Item TE 11.57, parking amendment, Dover Court Road. Councillor Bailao. Approve recommendations. On the recommendations from the councillor's letter, all those in favour? Oh, am I going too fast? These need to be introduced. It's 57 through 70. So I need a motion to introduce items 11.57 through 11.70. Councillor Fletcher, all those in favour of introduction. Okay, members, we, these will be on your pink sheets. We can go through those. Um, item TE 11.57, Parking Amendment, Dover Court Road. Councillor Bailao. Approve recommendations on the letter. On the councillor's recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.58, Parking Amendment Lisgar Street. Councillor Bailao. Approve recommendations. On the recommendations in the Councillor's letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.59, uh, Parking Amendments Oakwood Avenue, Earlsdale Avenue, and Earnscliff Road. Councillor Bailao. Approve uh, recommendations. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Councillor Bailao. Item TE 11.60, new business request reopening of item TE 8.66, parking amendment Pelham Avenue. Councillor Bailao. Approve recommendations. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.61, new business request, parking amendment, Rogers Road. Councillor Bailao. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.62, new business request, installation of speed humps on Niagara Street between King Street West and Bathurst Street. Councillor Cressy. 6-2. I'm just going to hold that down for one second. going to hold that. So 6 2 is held. Item TE 11.63, new business request Chester Hill Road and Lookout Design Improvements. Councillor Fletcher. Yes, I'd like to ask for a report back to April 7th and thank transportation staff for coming out to Toronto's premier makeout make spot. Um, Toronto's premier yes. makeout spot. Yes. You met city staff there? Yes, we, I did. Yes, and the police as well. <laughs> and the police. Quite the afternoon. So, on the recommendations, which uh, call for a report to the April 7th meeting, all those in favour, opposed, carried. What was the number, 6 2? Okay, so if we can go back to 6 2, excuse me. <coughs> Installation of speed humps on Niagara Street between King and Bathurst. <clears throat> on the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. <clears throat> Item TE 
Item TE 11.64, new business request, installation of speed humps on Cassells Avenue between Woodbine Avenue and Devon Road. Councillor Bradford. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move the recommendations in the letter, please. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.65, Councillor Matlow, uh, new business request 185 Beloyal Street, potential property acquisition for parkland. Um, I moved this and I just wanted to make a, a brief comment about it. Um, I'm working on so many things. This is one of, the, one of the items that I'm just so excited about the potential for because this is in the heart of Davisville Village, which is, uh, as you all know, an apartment neighborhood. It's a, growth, it, it's a growing area. And now with um, uh, a combination of the impacts of Bill 108 and the province's version of OPA 405, when they dismissed Midtown and Focus, um, that area is going to receive even more intense growth without the toolbox to be able to ensure uh, the services and infrastructure to keep up with the pace of that growth. We are fighting back however we can, and this is one of the ways we're doing it, to provide a park uh, right in the heart of this community where there are no parks today. So this is a really exciting possibility, and I'm really uh, proud of our city staff, along with my staff, who have been working on this, and I'm very happy to move this forward. So this is requesting an assessment of the feasibility of acquiring it? Okay. But it's Acquire the actually. site, which is currently a uh, tennis court. Okay. Um, on the recommendations in the letter, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Settle down over there. Item TE 11.66, uh, new business request, Bremner Boulevard and Spadina Avenue pedestrian crossing implementation. Councillor Cressy. I'll move the recommendations in my letter. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, item TE 11.67, new business request realignment of permit parking area 6G to exclude 203 Jarvis Street. Um, I'll hold that. Item TE 11.68, new business request installation of speed humps on Soho Street between Queen and Phoebe and Phoebe Street between Beverly and Huron. Councillor Cressy. I'll move the recommendations in my letter. On the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. You did that on purpose. <laughs> I know it was near Item TE 11.69, new business request parking amendment, Elgin Avenue. Councillor Layton. Yes, thank you very much. I'd like to move the recommendations in my letter. Okay, on the recommendations in the letter, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.70, new business request parking amendment, Lowther Avenue. Councillor Layton. Again, I'd like to move the recommendations in my letter. On the recommendations in the letter, can I have a motion to introduce TE 11.71? Councillor Cressy, all those in favour, opposed, carried. We'll deal with it now. Um, New business request, U-turn prohibitions, Moore Avenue. Councilor yes, thank Layton. you very much. Everyone should have it in front of them. This is to prohibit westbound U-turn movements at all times at Moore between Mount Pleasant and Clifton. Okay. On the recommendation in the letter, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay, members. Now we will return to our timed items, beginning with TE 11.1. Oh, sorry. Naming of an existing public lane bounded by Wallace Avenue, Symington Avenue, Antler Street, and Perth Avenue. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Bailao. Thank you. I'll move uh, uh, the recommendations on the letter and uh, thank all the residents that worked in my office uh, to get this renaming done. Okay. On the item, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.2540 to 544 King Street West and 1 through 7 Morrison Street, Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Final Report. We have deputants listed. Ursula Wotira. Ursula, come on up. 
Are you going to come together? You brought the big guns. Are you Isabella? Yeah? Have a seat. All those sticky tabs in her book. How many of us do that? <laughs> so Ursula and Isabella, so you have five minutes and you can watch the time run on that clock over there to my right. Make sure the microphone is lit up in front of you. We're both registered, so I think Isa has five minutes and I have five minutes, is that Okay, correct? sure. Okay. We can do that. All right, so let me just introduce myself. My name's Ursula Voitera. I'm the mother of Isa Voitera, and I'm also the mother of Tyrus Cox. Tyrus has graduated from Alpha Alternative Junior School. Um, Isa is currently there. She's in grade five, and she wants to speak to the issue. And uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the school. So the school is an old school. It's uh, formerly Brand Street School, currently occupied by Alpha Alternative Junior School on two floors and Oasis High School on the third floor. It's a beautiful red brick building, small, surrounded uh, by a little L-shaped playground. Most of it is concrete, but we've done a lot of work in the past to ensure that we have as much greenery for the kids as possible. So there are trees that we've planted, maple trees that we tap in the spring to, maple syrup, to make maple syrup. Um, there are bushes, but mostly it's pretty concrete. There's a lot of development that's going on around our school. So across the street is St. Andrew's Playground across Adelaide. There's a giant building that's going up just north of Adelaide. There's a building um, that's just to the east of us across Brand Street, and now there's this development that's being proposed. It's a pretty massive 50 meter tall L-shaped building that'll run along, um, along King Street and then north along uh, Morrison Street, basically all the way to Adelaide. So there's this big 50 meter long building that'll run from the south side of the school property almost to the end of the north side property. Given all the other developments that are going around, because there's another proposal that's at Morrison and Adelaide, there's another proposal that's at Portland and Adelaide, um, this is going to create basically a canyon that surrounds this little school. And the kids really appreciate having the playground because the, the school is small, there's no gymnasium, there's a basement in which they play if they can't play outside. And this is a problem because while playgrounds and parks are protected under the various policies that the city has, school property is not protected in the same way. And I can tell you, living in the downtown core, we use school playgrounds just like a normal park. And we have gone to Brant Street, to Alpha Alternative, to play on the weekend. We've had to hop the fence because currently the fences are locked. Um, because of the various things that go on in the evenings and in the weekends. But we use other schools as playgrounds as well. And we believe, and the community, the Alpha community believes that the school should be protected just like a playground, like a green space that should be accessible to all the public. So I understand that Councillor Cressy is going to recommend that nothing, no steps be taken at this uh, time at the Community Council and that this now go to City Council um, to give a little bit more time for the community and the developers to discuss before the December 17th meeting at City Council, at which point a decision will be made. The Alpha community asks that actually this be deferred until January, if not later, because we don't believe that two weeks is a sufficient amount of time to work with the developers. And what we're really asking for is the developers to really take into account that there's a school right next to where they're building. While they've proposed putting up a green wall, we feel that's a relatively small token gesture. The problem is the building is just very massive. It's tall, it's long, and it doesn't have a break in it. The kids will effectively be shaded for most of the day, for most of the year that they're in school, and they're in school 10 months of the year. So we would like this council to defer it until a later time to give more time for the developers and the community to meet together and to increase more space. I understand that there's a previous OMB proposed, uh, uh, approved, part of the development, 
I would say that that's actually of no moment because that's not what the developer is building here. And so the city should take brave steps and not be scared of what the LPAT or potentially an OMB may ultimately rule because I don't think we can get much worse than what we have on the books right now. So with that, I'm going to give it to my daughter. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions of the deputant? No? Seeing none? Okay, Isabella, your turn. Hi, my name is Isabella. I'm in grade five, and I go to Alpha Alternative School. And I'm reading a book that I think <laughs> completely does, well, it's basically happening to my school, I feel, and it's called The Little House, Story and Pictures by Virginia Lee Burton. The little house was a happy. The little house was very happy. She sat on the hill. She watched the countryside around her. She watched the sun rise in the morning, and she watched the sunset in the evening. Day followed day, each a little different from the one before. But the little house stayed the same. In the winter, when the nights were long and the days short, and the countryside covered with snow. She watched the children coasting and skating. Year followed year. The apple trees grew old and the new ones were planted. The children grew up and went away to the city. And now at night, the lights of the city seemed brighter and closer. One day, the little house was surprised to see horseless carriages coming down the winding country road. Pretty soon, there were more of them and on, on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon along came surveyors and surveyed a line in front of the little house. Pretty soon came along a steam shovel and dug a road through the hill covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road. Then some trucks with little stones. Then some trucks with tar and sand. And finally, steamroller came and rolled all smooth. And it, the road was done. The air was filled with dust and smoke. The noises were so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when spring came or summer or fall or winter. It all seemed the same. No people, people were moving faster and faster. No one noticed the little house anymore. They hurried by without a glance. Pretty soon, they tore down the apartment houses and tenement houses on, and started digging big cellars, one side on each side. The steam shovels dug down three stories on one side and four stories on the other. Pretty soon they started building up. They built 25 stories on one side and 35 stories on the other. Then one fine morning in spring, along came a great, great grand granddaughter of the man who built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house, and, but she didn't hurry by. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, that little house just looks like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl, only that that little house was way out in the country on a hill covered with daisies and apple trees going around. They found out it was the very same house. So they went to the movers to see if the, move, if the little house could be moved. The movers looked at the little house all over and said, sure, this house was built as good as ever. She's built so well, we could move her anywhere. So they jacked up the house and put her on wheels. The tra traffic was held up for hours as they slowly moved her out of the city. At first, do you want to just, do you want to do this one? Yeah. The windows and shutters were fixed, and once they painted her a lovely shade of pink, as the little house settled down on her new foundation, this, she smiled happily. Once again, she could watch the sun and moon and stars. Once again, she could watch spring and summer and fall come and go. Once again, she was lived in and taken care of. Can you tell them why you think this is like the school? I think this is like the school because buildings are getting built around, and it's just becoming crazy. It's dusty in the school playground already, and I don't want it to be even dustier because even a green wall. My question is, how will it grow if it has no shit? If it has no sunlight to grow? Anyways, there's a picture of the book. It's really. It's all confusing. <laughs> nice.
So I'm just going to borrow 30 seconds of my daughter's time. We can't do this to a school. We can't move the school out of the city. And the people that want to move into these buildings want to be able to send their kids to the school. The school is part of the community, and that has to be taken into account. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Isabella? No? Isabella, thank you very much for your deputation. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yes, sir. Come on up. Introduce yourself. We'll have the clerk sign you in when you're done. Could you tell us your name, please? Yes, my name is Joseph I'm the father of a, a daughter who attends Alpha Public School as well. Okay, Joseph, you'll have five minutes and you can watch your time over here on the clock to my right. Before us is not a difficult decision or an ethical question. If you were to explain to almost anyone that a developer wants to construct a building that is so big it will deprive school children, four, five, six, seven to 12 years old, from experiencing sunlight during practically their entire middle school experience, they would say that is horrible, wrong, and unacceptable. And yet even when the situation is as ethically clear cut as this one, we are told that we can do nothing. Our democratically elected community council, who knows that this development is broadly opposed by the community, who knows the deep impact this building will have on the lives of our children, is telling us that they will not reject this application, that the system is broken. And I agree, it is broken. The law only allows a developer to build 23 meters high, a height that if upheld would vastly improve the amount of sunlight shining on the school and totally protect the park across the street. The developers, Allied and Great Gulf, decide they want to build 50 meters high, right beside a school, blocking all the sun. The Toronto Urban Planning Department looks at this application and without any community consultation, approves it. The system is broken. The school and community are rightly outraged, organize, protest, and express their discontent. And when the application reaches this council for approval, our good city councillor here, Joe Cressy, defers the decision and states that this development is unacceptable. Unacceptable. So let us not pretend or play politics or not say what we really mean, for that is not the transparency that democracy requires. If you believe that LPAT will simply overturn your decision, then let them. Let them continue to cozy up to developers and make unpopular decisions so that we can channel that energy and target that unelected body for reform in the next, in the next election cycle. If you believe that this, this city's institutions no longer have the ability to make significant decisions about the future of our city, then please tell us that truth. Tell that this council, council's power has been removed and work with us towards provincial reforms that can change that. But if you approve this application, this council will also be responsible for yet an another horrible decision where communities walk away heads down, hearts low, having lost faith in their public institutions, having lost faith that this is in fact a democracy that represents our wishes. So let's not let that be the tale of this city, please. And let's give my daughter the opportunity to experience sunlight during the rest of her middle school experience. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? Uh, sir, 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 please, if you could have a seat. Yeah. Councillor Cressy has a question he'd like to ask you. So thank you for the deputation. I, I just, for a point of clarification, you said in the deputation there was no consultation. Are you aware that there were three public meetings held, in addition to meetings held at the school and meetings convened by my office? Yeah, I was at those meetings. What, okay. what I said was the urban planning department before approving this proposal and us finding out afterwards and being consulted had already had done so without any public consultation. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that those meetings were hosted by the planning department that you attended. Our school was not informed at any point that, that, that that's what was being done, and we only found out through other means. Okay. So, 
that, I just wanted okay. to clarify that okay. there were public meetings in consultation. I believe that's Thank been you. clarified. Thank you. Are there any further questions of the deputy? No, seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? No? Are there any questions of staff? No? Councillor Cressy. Oh. Just a point of clarification. In 2009, there was an OMB approval on part of this site. Is that correct? You, Council Chair, that's correct. And, and what was that approval for? That approval was for a, I believe it was a 12-story building having a, it was a building having a height of approximately 35, 36 meters. Um, and did that, and was that approved, was that OMB decision, I believe it was nine stories, not 12. Um, was that OMB decision supported by the city? That OMB decision was not supported by the city. And the existing OMB decision that is in place on this site, does that, does that have any uh, setbacks or does it, does it build lot line to lot line? It is primarily lot line to lot line. And does that approval shadow the school? Yes, it does. Okay. In 2018, we received a revised application joining two properties. Um, since 2018, what consultation has taken place between the city planning department and the community? Yes, we have had a number of consultation meetings. There was formal consultation that took place in, um, in 2018 and then also a follow-up in the summer of um, 2019. We had met with the school community as well on the school grounds, had a, a meeting and a, a walk through the school. And then we had um, another meeting through the counselor's office at the beginning of October of this year. Um, and based on the feedback at those meetings between 2018 to today, what changes have been made thus far related to the school? Some of the biggest changes made is that the original application really had a base building that very much followed the footprint of the previous OMB approval with a tower on top. And that was one of the key concerns of staff was that the, the base building it ranged in height between about 33 to 35 meters, and this was too tall. The, um, the base building has now been reduced in height quite substantially. It varies in height depending on the the position of the, of the building, but particularly immediately adjacent to the school. The base building now has been reduced to one story, and so that's a five meter tall base building with the, the initial step back starting above that five meters. So there's a five and a half meter step back from the property line that's shared with the school, and that starts at a height of five meters. Um, and under this proposal in front of us, are there more or less shadows on the playground than the existing OMB approval? The overall amount of shadow is less than the existing OMB approval. Uh, last month, there was a deferral for city planning to engage in conversations with the community as well as the applicant to look at additional changes. Have you had conversations with the applicant on this since then? We have had conversations, yes. And has the applicant indicated a willingness to make further changes between now and council? They have, yes. Okay. Uh, those are all my questions. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Okay. We're good? Okay. To speak, Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you. And let me begin. I have an amendment. First of all, it is to move without recommendations at this point towards Council uh, and with direction to work on the following between now and then, specifically impacts on the school related to construction, related to the adjacent neighborhood, and should those be successful, we also want to, of course, consider construction, traffic, and site plan matters. Let me speak to this chamber and let me speak to the members of the public who came here, because uh, this is one of those very challenging and difficult local files. City planning and, and heritage are supportive of the application in front of us. We have adjacent neighbors who are not pleased, we have significant concerns from a local school, but we also have an additional complication which we cannot ignore. There is an OMB approved development on this site already. Uh, it was an OMB approval that the city did not support. So having heard the desire for further changes and a desire from some for a deferral, 
Let me walk through what the options are in front of us. Let me help to allow the public and members of this committee to understand my thought process and decision making here. There's been more than two years of work on this, and we have an applicant who has expressed a willingness to make further changes, but an applicant who has also said that if this is yet another deferral, that this will result in an appeal. So here are three options in front of me. Option one, defer again or oppose the application. As a counselor, what I do in that case is I wash my hands of this. I turn it over to the legal process with the LPAT, an extremely risky situation, especially one where we won't have city planning beside us because they are in support, and one where precedents in the area do not support us. I wash my hands of this and say, and I can blame the LPAT, but I believe we'd get a worse outcome for my community. I'm not doing my job. That's one option. A second option, is to endorse what's in front of us today on the advice of staff. I believe we can still do better. The applicant has stated they are still willing to work on changes. And so that is, an, I don't believe we should just endorse it. And a third option, send this to council, not approving in front of us, but without recs, and direction to work on those changes and use the urgency of now and then to get them. Those are the three options in front of me. I can wash my hands and point the blame at somebody else. I can endorse what's in front of me today and say that's the best I can do, or I can continue to work to do better for my community. And it's the third option I'm gonna take. So the content on this one. In 2009, the OMB approved a nine-story, 37-meter building that was lot line to lot line adjacent to the school that went straight up and cast a shadow on the playground. It shouldn't have been approved. In 2018, a new application came in slightly different joining two properties. And in two years of meetings and with a working group, we have had significant changes. Not perfect, but significant. Heritage retention, height that now complies with the secondary plan, moving parking off from Brant to, off Morrison to Brant, and step backs and setbacks. And for the school, unlike the previous OMB decision, it is set back from the property line. There's a lower base building. It actually reduces shadow over what is currently approved under the OMB decision, and it includes a green wall. Now, I don't believe we're there yet. Let me give you very clearly what my objective is here. It is to end up with a development that is significantly better than the existing OMB approval. I want to use this as an opportunity to improve the status quo. And I don't accept that the status quo is nothing there. My contention and the developer's contention is the status quo is what the OMB has approved. And I want to end up with a development that significantly reduces the shadow and impact on the school over what has been approved. Should we secure those changes on traffic and construction and site plan, we'll go to work. I acknowledge in this, as some of the deputants have noted, that there are flaws in this policy and process. A flaw in the policy is that under TO Core, our downtown secondary plan that the province ripped up but that we seek to still enforce, parks are protected from sunlight but not playgrounds. That is a policy issue we need to address. But the legal process, it is one that is confusing. It is one that takes power out of the hands of local community. It is one that often forces us to make decisions on projects based on the legal uh, realm we live in. But just as the city continues to demand changes to it, I cannot ignore it and let my neighborhoods suffer. And so in conclusion, I would like to thank the parents and the uh, neighborhood representatives from the GDNA and other properties for their hard work to improve what was in front of us from 2018 to now. I wanna thank staff. They have put in yeoman's time and work from consultations in the community, with, in the school, with my office. It's not often that we're not on the same page, but I believe we are closer. And I'd like to thank the applicant. Uh, I know that they prefer to be done now. I know that they could walk away and appeal, but they have indicated a complete willingness to continue working on changes. And until we get those, my work isn't done. Thank you very much. Any questions to the mover? Any other members to speak? Okay, on Councillor Cressy's motions, all those in favor? Opposed, that carries. Okay, uh, before we go to the next item, I just wanna uh, sort of announce something for members of the committee and members of the public. We have scheduled an item TE 11.5, which is the Bloor Dufferin site. Looking at the time we have now and the number of deputants, 
I wanted to make you aware there's a press conference which Councillor Bailao, the local councillor, will have to attend, and I know some of the deputants have an interest in. So very likely, we, we, so I, it is not possible we would be able to complete the agenda to the point of 11.5 in time for that. So what I'm proposing to do uh, is to move that item until after the completion of that press conference, probably at about 11.30. Okay, so that people are aware of that. Just wanted to make that note. People, in case people have uh, time commitments and time constraints. Okay, uh, the next item we have is TE 11.3. 1627 Danforth Avenue, City Initiated Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Final Report. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yeah. Seeing none, that is. Oh, you keep promising to put the councillor's names on both sheets. Councillor Bradford. <laughs> Where's the council's board anymore? On item three. Which we could stand that down if you'd like to consult with staff for a moment. Hold that for a second. Sure. We'll stand that one down while Councillor Bradford consults with staff. Um, oh, the next one's yours too. Uh, item TE 11.4, uh, Main Street Planning Study, City Initiated Official Plan Amendment Final Report. I have deputants listed. Uh, Donna Braniff. Donna? Hi, Donna. How are you this morning? If you can just take a seat, make sure the microphone button is lit up in front of you so you know it's live. There's a clock over here to your right. You can watch your time on. You'll have five minutes. Okay, red is on. Red is on? Yes. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Donna Braniff, and I have lived at 40 at Westlake Avenue near Stevenson Avenue Park and Park for 30 years and four years at Carmelina Condominium at Danforth and Woodbine. I have been very active in the community and helped start the Danforth East Association of Repairs, Incorporated, in 2003, and worked to help create the Danforth Professional Association. And from long hours of meetings, the Danforth Village BIA was formed. For the past four years, I have been president of Carmelina Condominium TSCC 2455. To the credit of the Main Street plan, some, some of the points of connectivity to the GO Train subway make sense. However, over the years, planning has ignored the widening of sidewalks to Main and Woodbine subways for pedestrians, leaving people squeeze their way to get to work, and I know I was one of them. In attending meetings for the Danforth Avenue study and the Main Street Avenue study, I find that any freedom of speech is quickly squashed, and after the PowerPoint presentation, we were then sent to a room to view boards or spin a wheel to ask questions individually. No minutes of what was spoken were taken. From living in a house, then moving to and becoming involved in a condo, condominium corporation, let me tell you, it is very different in condo land. I want to make the Toronto and East York Community Council aware of what will happen if you allow this type of density to happen. After turnover of our condo, we found that contracts were already set in place by the developer. One of the most contentious was the tri-sorter lease, which we were locked into for seven years at a cost of $34,272. Surprise, surprise. Yes, we could get out of it, at a cost of $20,625 plus HST after 30 days of being installed. Well, that date had already passed. Garbage is done by private companies, and most of the garbage that comes out of these tri-sorters are going to landfill sites. 
We also found that we needed to select a myriad of different contacts, contracts, the most important an engineering firm at a considerable cost that was able to carry out the first and second year performance audits, along with them completing a reserve fund study. The Condo Act binds the corporation to increase fees for the first three years to match what is in the reserve fund study presented by the engineering firm. Because what the developer proposed, and when they actually turned over the, con the corporation to the owners, well, there was a deficiency. Most condos do not want to pay for a full-time property manager. And to keep maintenance fees low, opt for one that is either one or two week days a week. In our experience, this was the most egregious issue. There is a shortage of certified property managers or CPMs in Toronto and Ontario. Owing to the new laws, most companies have PMs managing, property, managing five properties a week. Also, most condo purchasers do not realize that it is them, not the developer, that have to pay for the Section 37 benefit money, which the city lauds as a developer is paying in the newspaper, which goes to parks, art, and whatever the councillor for the area sees fit. I paid $15,000 when I moved into my unit on closing. The city needs to tell people buying into these condos that it is their dime, not the developers, or buy a condo that states no development fees. When we moved in, there were 90 renters out of 147 units. That is important in itself. Entering and exiting off of Woodbine Avenue is an absolute nightmare owing to the bike lanes, and it was interesting that you hired a company to count how many cars entering and exiting our building. It is also interesting that you installed speed humps on Mendel Avenue, first street south of our condo on Woodbine, after the bike lanes were installed. At what cost? Recently, a very big vehicle took out those bike posts on the west side of Woodbine. At what cost? I implore you not to place bike lanes on Danforth Anna, Avenue or on Main Street. Can I ask you your final thought, please? Thank you. Is that, that's all? Oh, no. One do final think, thought. Do you think me as a senior, along with growing, the growing majority in this area, is going to ride a bicycle to Shoppers World? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, are there any questions for Donna? Councillor Bradford? Thanks very much uh, for the deputation, Donna. Um, do you have any suggestions? I know you were out at the public meetings and appreciate your input. Um, do you have any suggestions on, uh, with respect to the format, how, how you could be better engaged and consulted? How I can be better engaged? Well, I think some of these meetings, after doing the PowerPoint presentation, is have the collective ask, ask questions of the councillors and the, uh, the planning staff. But not one-on-one? -on -one. No, no. It, it's almost like you're shutting us down and shutting us into a room, as I explained. Okay. Thanks very much for the deputation. Thanks for coming down. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the deputy? Seeing none, thank you, Donna. Thank you um, very Jerry Dunn? Jerry here? Hi, Jerry. Thank you. Good morning. You'll have five minutes. Uh, you can watch your time on the clock to my right over here. Okay. And just before I get started, I want to agree with the previous deputy about the ineffectiveness of the consultation, which I've attended many of. There we go. Okay, uh, my name is Jerry Dunn. I'm a resident of the Maine Danforth area. Um, this is a response to the Main Street planning study as formulated by the planning department uh, by the v recent uh, consultations in the Maine and Danforth area. After criticizing the study publicly in a recent East York Chronicle article, I felt it would be more valuable to present an alternative vision for the area under discussion. In my view, the Main Street study is simply a repeat of many bad proposals that focus on high rises and high density at the expense of local communities, or even good design. 
It supports the continued carpet bombing of neighborhoods with 30-story condos in every available space, while ignoring balanced development, which should include missing middle components. Attached to the, this submission is a document representing a different perspective on developing the main hub. It starts from the premise that people are more important than buildings. Yes, we need density, but not at the cost of destroying the ground level experience of those who live in the area. In many ways, this could be seen as a complete streets response to the Main Street study, a process that wasn't included in the study consultations. The, this Main Street hub vision, which is attached to this submission, uh, was formulated and presented publicly by Brown and Story Architects at my request to a public event I launched on June 10th, excuse me, 2017 in Main Square called Danforth Village Fair. The presentation drew a lot of positive comments from the local residents attending the fair. It addresses many issues untouched by the Main Street study. The drawings include ideas on how to create pedestrian links across the area, including improved accessibility between the GO station and TTC station. A tunnel under the Danforth for safer TTC access, a bike and pedestrian tunnel under the main bridge for better community access to Stevenson Park, and an outstanding proposal for, for the bridge itself, which could turn into a destination rather than an obstruction. The Urban Land Institute also created four alternative visions for that area. And these are a more positive way of, think, of planning our neighborhoods. A what would we like instead of not in my backyard. The attachments to this submission include a single page, which is on the screen. Uh, slide number 56 from the, con the final consultation on the Main Street study. And as you can see, every square inch of the space appears to be filled by tall buildings. Um, there was no um, uh, component of this study that actually addressed the street level um, interaction with these new buildings. And the second um, document is, this is a poor substitute. Um, because the PDF is much better, um, is a, a vision of how that area could function as a pedestrian uh, focal point, a hub, a, p a pedestrian hub, a community hub, um, and incorporating then buildings that are compatible with that perspective. Um, you can see that there are quite, there are quite significant differences uh, between the two proposals. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say, except that this perspective of uh, 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 complete streets has not been included. And I would like to see a, uh, perhaps a deferral of this submission, uh, motion until that is done or I'll actually defer to my counselor in terms of how that could be addressed. I don't know. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Jerry? Councillor Bradford? Thanks for coming down. Appreciate the deputation, Jerry. Um, when you say complete streets, are you referring to streets that accommodate all road users, active transportation? Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll ask staff questions about that. Um, you are aware that the quarter study for Danforth, complete street quarter study, is underway. That's for the Danforth, it's not for Main Street. Yeah, Main Street separately, but the study area, of course, includes frontage on Danforth, Dawes Road, parts of Main Street. It's, it's, not, it's called Main Street Planning Study, but it's actually much bigger than that, and most of the parcels identified are as you move east towards. Questions. Questions, sorry. <laughs> Um, did you get a chance to read through the the report? I know it's pretty yes, it's pretty big, but yes, yeah. um, I was uh, stunned by the um, uh, what is it called? I can't remember. The 
So, sure. so I'll just in line with continuing with questions. Okay. Um, I kind of broke it down into my view, ten sort of policy objectives. Yep. Uh, one of which, number two, was the public realm. Did you get a chance to look through that stuff? Uh, objectives. I think this is something that is being proposed for today, not for tomorrow. Um, objectives are. <laughs> Uh, happy thinking. I mean, you know, that's um, these are ideas that might happen right. or not, or depending on what some developer decides. So I I agree that at this level these are sort of objectives, and as you know, like this is a site in area specific. Bradford, please. Oh, sorry. Questions of the de deputy. Um, okay. Um, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think those are all my questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, questions for the deputy? No? Jerry, thank you very much for coming down today. Thank you. Next, I have John Stewart. John? Yep. Hi, come on up, John. Am I able to plug in to... Yes, you are. Uh, if we could have some AV assistance. And for anyone else who's brought any kind of electronic uh, presentation, um, before your deputation, just go over to the AV booth and alert the staff so that we can be ready for you. Just talk amongst yourselves. Enjoy the great paint colors in here. There we go. There we go. Okay. John, you'll have five minutes and you can see your time over here on the clock on to my right. Can I just close a window here and, okay, sorry. Um, so my name is John Stewart and I'm a longtime resident in this uh, particular neighborhood on Main Street, which is uh, just north of the uh, area in subject and uh, in study, I should say. And obviously uh, adding a large number of uh, buildings, as you can see on the screen here, is going to add a large number of people to the area, probably estimated something to be 10 to 15,000 new people. Um, the study area includes the main TTC and Go Danforth station, so it's obvious that the location satisfies the province's growth plans uh, that call for adding density near public transit and thus reduce but not eliminate the need for car usage in the area. In the Main Street Planning Study, the density massing model, which is on the screen, um, is very helpful and gives a good uh, kind of understanding of what is proposed or what is possible here. It's not the exact plan, but it, it, it seems to be appropriate. Uh, however, some area residents, including myself, have concerns that the density towards the east of the study area, which is along this blue line, uh, and in this area here, if you can see the cursor moving, is maybe uh, a little too high because recent buildings which have been constructed here on Trent Avenue are of a lower density which really are probably more appropriate for the area. And we always wanted to try and achieve a drop down from the maximum height at Main Square to transition down to these lower density buildings. So I still hope that that's something that can be achieved. Um, the success of this study relies heavily on public transit and I feel there are multiple transportation issues that the various transportation providers need to clarify. Ideally, a proactive, proactive vision and model of how the various transportation elements are going to work together needs to be undertaken. The current GO and TTC infrastructure need improvements to accommodate the increased usage, while at the same time city transportation needs to take measures to correct protect surrounding neighborhood streets. Um, from the ever increasing uh, levels of traffic infiltration, which is not likely to improve with this plan. Presently, the main TTC station already leaves riders behind on the platform and at all other stations east of Maine in the morning rush hour. The Go Danforth station has obvious relief line potential, but it too may have capacity limits. Pedestrian access is limited to one point on Danforth, I should say, sorry, on Main, which is actually in this area here. Um, and it has no facilities. It has no facilities currently for pickups or drop offs, cars, taxis, etc and there are no bike lane connections, bike storage or short-term or long-term parking. The main TTC, main TTC station has very similar issues. 
The Main Street Planning Study needs to reach out and include uh, an area transportation plan from the City Transportation, the, the TTC, and Go Metrolinx, with their vision of what the ideal transportation design looks like, including a model like the massing model. Uh, I'd like to see a real commitment from the city to make this area a successful transit-oriented community with meaningful transfer, transit infrastructure improvements to train and bus service, pedestrian access, bike lane, bike lane access, and pick up and drop off improvements. At the same time, the existing vehicle traffic plus its increases need to be planned for, including a plan to prote protect the surrounding low density neighborhoods, which is part of the official plan. Finally, I believe the recommendation number five on page two of this report uh, should be amended to include the study area um, of the intersections of Danforth and Dawes Road. And these, where we have the red dots here, uh, the ones which are in the study are circled in green. So there's three of them. I propose that these should be including Dawes and Danforth, as that's a key access point to this development, and also the area directly in front of Main Station. This is a 50-year-old station. Nothing much has changed in that time period. And as we all know, uh, when you add this amount of people to the area, lots of things need to change, perhaps even an east uh, entrance to the station and, of course, access for pickup and drop-offs, but also protection for those residents who are living north of the station. Um, I think Ron, can this, I ask you for your final thought, please? Yeah, uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime plan, uh, and it impacts a large sur surrounding area. It probably represents the largest single development in Ward 19 history. I generally agree with the massing and density, but the transportation portion needs to be absolutely the best it can be. Thank you very thank much. You. Are there any questions of the deputant? No? John, thank you for your time today. You. Um, David Hine. Morning, David. Good morning. We'll have five minutes. Good morning, Council Chair and members of Community Council. My name is David Hun. I'm a planner at Bellsfields, Inc., and I am here on behalf of our client, Six Dawes Danforth, Inc., who owns Six Dawes Road, a key site located within the boundaries of the Main Street planning study. We recently submitted, on behalf of the owner, a rezoning application to permit a mixed-use development comprised with a new community centre, an integrated ghost transit station, and three residential towers with heights of 40, 46, and 49 storeys. Prior to our submission, we consulted with the city's planning department, both through our own pre-application process as well as through the study process. We provided feedback on how the property, our property could be redeveloped that was in keeping with the goals and objectives of the city's study. We have reviewed the final staff report and the draft official plan amendment, and while our client is generally supportive of the vision to foster a complete and mixed-use community that seeks to utilize and integrate higher-order transit, we submit that many of the policy directions set out in the proposed OPA require further consideration, particularly as it relates to matters of implementation. We are therefore requesting that this matter be deferred and that staff be directed to undertake additional consultation with stakeholders in order to consider and address the various issues raised in respect of the proposed OPA. Firstly, we submit that the proposed OPA should include the delineation of the major transit station area boundaries for the two higher order transit stations in the study area. The proposed OPA should in turn include a policy framework that specifically implements the intensification policy set out in the growth plan to achieve the optimization of this key public infrastructure. Secondly, under the proposed OPA, the east portion of the property is identified as a transition area mid-rise which would limit development in this area to a mid-rise building typology in order to minimize built form impacts. The site-specific development proposal submitted for the property demonstrates that a greater intensity of development is appropriate at the location identified as transition area mid-rise in the proposed OPA. The site-specific proposal has been designed to ensure limited built form impacts having regard to the existing and planned context of the property and its surroundings. To the extent that the proposed OPA limits the development potential of the property beyond what would otherwise be achievable based on principles of good planning, it is not consistent with and does not conform with provincial policy. 
Also, several of the proposed policies contemplate specific built form and land use requirements that involve a more granular assessment base best determined at the site-specific zoning stage. The objectives, that, the objectives that inform these proposed policy, policies should be more generally stated and balanced with other city and provincial policy objectives in order to provide flexibility for property owners to pursue designs that respond to site and area physical characteristics. The proposed OPA contemplates significant new community infrastructure, including lands to be dedicated for new consolidated public parks. This direction appears to be predicated on the expectation that these objectives will be achieved, notably as it, notably as it pertains to consolidated public parks through a coordinated process amongst public and private interests. However, it is unclear how this proposed policy framework will be achieved, particularly given the pending changes to the Planning Act related to parks and community benefits. It is our respectful submission this related to um, this represents a critical flaw in the proposed OPA, which requires further consideration by the city staff through consultation with interested stakeholders. Finally, we submit that the proposed OPA include a transitional provision to grandfather existing applications to ensure fairness and certainty in the planning process. Thank you for your consideration of these submissions. Our client and our consultant team remain committed to working with city staff to address these concerns expressed today and in our formal letter that has been submitted to the city clerk's department. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the deputy? No? Thank you for, oh, Councillor Layton. I'm just, I was unclear, how does it not achieve provincial policy? The, like this notion of the transitions that, that, that you're saying don't achieve well, I, again, you know, part of our submission is that, you know, the city is required to do, um, to define the boundaries of the ma major transit station areas, and we feel that uh, this study doesn't go as far as to do that, and we feel that through that process of uh, delineating the boundaries, it would further uh, identify more... Um, more keeping, areas for development. Well, it would really then scope the, the, what types of intensification are appropriate in, in the area. But, but you don't think the level of intensification that's being proposed in the report is going to meet every standard for the, the province around how the city should grow under every other piece of provincial legislation? Well, we feel that there's more opportunities for optimization of the density in the area. On your particular site? In, that would include our yeah. site, yes. and, and you're banking on significant changes coming from the province to reduce the amount of parkland contributions, correct? Is that what I heard you say? No, that, I mean, we were saying that that part of the discussion that needs to be considered is the pending changes that are happening uh, with relating to parks and community benefits. And, and do you know when those changes are happening? At this point, we don't know. Yeah. Do you know when the last changes happened? Because there seem to be changes to the planning framework for Ontario all the time, that if actually what we did was sit and wait for the province to start to, to solidify their direction, that we would be waiting for a long time, like forever. That wasn't a question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Councillor Councillor Bradford has questions as well. Yes. Thanks very much. Are you aware of the municipal comprehensive review process with respect to MTSAs that's going on in the city right now? Yes. Okay. So that work is underway, and you understand that. Yes. Okay. And when did your uh, when did the applicant file their submission? We filed our application last week. Right. And so, were you aware that this report was coming to Community Council December third? We were. Yes. But you're asking us to defer and grandfather in your application, which you filed last week? Yes, but we also... But you knew the report was coming this week, but you didn't want to wait a week? Didn't want to wait a week for... To have the report in front of you so that you could have considered your application in the context of the report that's being presented here today? To no, we did time. review the report as, as part of our application. So then I'm trying to issue. understand the rationale for the, the request of grandfathering when you knew that this was coming, you filed last week, you filed intentionally a week before this landed here at TEYCC, December 3rd. Yes, but I think we... So what was, tell me what the reason was for filing last week versus waiting until after this came to TEYCC. We wanted to file the application in advance of it. So that you could ask me to grandfather it. Okay, right. okay. Oh, that's it, thanks. Do you have an answer for that question? No, I don't. You don't. Okay, that's noted. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions of the deputant? No, seeing none, thank you very much for coming down today. 
Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? No, don't lose your cord. No, seeing none. Are there any questions of staff? Are there any questions of staff? Yeah, Councillor Bradford. Uh, I'll give my thanks and my comments, but uh, it's very exciting to have this here in front of us. Uh, could you go over what prompted us? We had just done the Danforth Avenue planning study. How did we, how, what was the genesis for the main planning study? How did that come about? Uh, through the chair. Um, thanks for the question. And uh, so the, the reason that we started this study, it was because uh, City Council had directed us to do this study as a reaction to the development application at 286 to 294 Main Street. That was a tall building that was proposed at 30 stories. Um, and then we started to get uh, development interest within the area, uh, specifically where the Main Street planning study boundaries are located. Uh, and that development interest, interest included taller building forums. And so the councilor at the time passed the motion for city staff to, uh, to do a study that was both included built form and public realm. And uh, that's how we began the study, both from, a, from because of a reaction to a development application and in order to get ahead of, of new proposals that we knew that were, gonna, that were coming in and had interest. Would it be fair to say that as we've done this over the past year, year and a half, um, city planning and staff have had regard to the ongoing changes from the provincial government and tried to bring in the um, site and area specific policy in alignment with those changes as best we can? Uh, through the chair, uh, absolutely. It was uh, the growth plan, the provincial policy statement. Those were critical in our review of uh, the the Main Street planning study. When we hired uh, SVN, that was one of their goals: was to make sure that whatever development that we uh, are considering for this area, that it includes and has a lens of the growth plan, because we knew that that was important, and we knew that not only. Uh, the province wanted to direct growth to this area because it has both the TTC station and the Danforth GO station and requires a certain level of intensification in this area, but also the official plan directs growth to uh, areas of the city that have higher order public transit. Which this would qualify as, would you anticipate that what we're proposing and bringing forward here today uh, would be in conformity with the provincial plans as, as contemplated today? Uh, Yes, it, it would be in conformity. Okay, uh, another big question is, uh, we heard comments from the deputants, uh, Jerry, today talking about whether these are aspirational goals or objectives. Um, could you talk about how, uh, at a high level, how we can actually implement some of these things through site plan and that process versus the objectives in a site and area specific policy, which are more objectives for the area versus how we actually get the sidewalks, get the parks, unlock that stuff through the development process? Uh, so through the chair, um, so the policy itself would give us the space to, to uh, and the direction to uh, get, you know, new public streets and new parkland. So for example, uh, the, the official plan amendment requires that, uh, creates a new street, so it basically extends Dawes Road, and we would, and that is delineated on the official plan amendment, the proposed official plan amendment. And so th once that is adopted, hopefully, uh, then that means that we would be able to obtain that road through development applications. And that would be through the zoning process, through the site plan process, and that land would get conveyed to the city. And it is critical that we get that land in order for the orderly development of, of this area. And so one of the key themes of the official plan amendment for a Main Street planning study was to unlock uh, intensification and you cannot unlock the intensification without those uh, those that infrastructure both in terms of the road network as well as the social uh, aspect of it so community services and facilities and parkland and so we would also be getting uh, for example the parkland uh, through uh, both on-site dedication as well as off-site dedication and working with our partners in the development industry through various agreements to make sure that the parks that we're getting are larger and more uh, usable and programmable. Okay, last question. Um, is it safe to say then, when this process started, we had zero applications in, uh, then we had four. Now, as of last week, we have five. Uh, there's a lot of development activity and interest in this particular intersection and area. Uh, is it safe to say that city planning 
you know, part of this is actually taking a coordinated approach, not to look at this as a site-by-site -site, uh, review, but actually a broader, more holistic uh, analysis so that we can unlock the community services necessary to support the growth, uh, achieve greater parks, uh, bring those together. Is, was that the approach to look at it as an entire area as opposed to site-by-site? Yes, that is the approach. It was, to, it was to look at this holistically and comprehensively. And we also held through the study process a landowners consultation to get the developers in to discuss uh, the, the direction that we were going with the, on the Main Street Planning Study and get their feedback on that. And uh, it's, it's my intention as, as the planner for this area and working on those development applications to make sure that, that uh, all the applicants are working together and thinking about this site as, as thinking about this area as one, because I certainly will be. So just to clarify then, that would be city planning's expectation that applicants will work together to unlock these sites and make sure we're achieving community objectives. That is correct. Thanks very much, all my questions. Are there any more questions of staff? No, to speak, Councillor Bradford. Um, thanks very much, um, through the chair. This has been a long process. I think it's been a good process. Um, one of the, the feedback points I hear often from, from the community is, is the city planning process um, still leaves something to be desired. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I'm still trying to contemplate how you take a room of a couple hundred people and uh, you know tease out all those questions. And um, I think the important thing to note is uh, colleagues in city planning understand that. Um, it is an evolutionary Mr. process. Brad, and Mr. Bradford, I'm very sorry to interrupt you. Did you have a motion oh, I'd like to, to move yes. at the beginning of your remarks? Yep, sorry. Yeah, I, so I have a couple motions here. Um, I'm going to introduce the motion. So basically, the first half of these are technical amendments that have been prepared by staff. Um, we've also included timelines because the CS and F study, which is really important um, to uh, you know make sure that we we have this. Uh, infrastructure in place to support this growth, that that work is actually being advanced, and we'd like to hear back by the end of 2020 on, on what that looks like. I also want to include the TTC in consultations and discussions around intersection redesign, uh, especially to accommodate buses. Uh, we heard from deputants speaking to that today. And then there's also a piece, um, we got correspondence from one of the applicants um, addressing an oversight about road width, so this corrects that. The other recommendations you will see were outlined in my letter, which was circulated to, com uh, to committee. A uh, couple key ones there. Uh, certainly, with all of this growth and development coming, we want to make sure that it's of a very high quality design uh, and high quality standards. So I'm proposing here that we're going to have a Danforth design district and have all of the buildings that are identified as tall buildings circulated to the design review panel as part of that coming in here to really raise the bar. I also want to incorporate opportunities uh, to look at thermal energy solutions, low carbon energy options, uh, and proactively informing TDSB and the TTC and the TCDS be uh, of the growth so that they can proactively um, plan for it. Sometimes those things aren't coordinated very well. Looking for bike share opportunities and green P parking opportunities here as well. Uh, and then adjusting map four so that I can clarify my intention uh, and the community's intention to find additional opportunities for park space frontage directly on Danforth. So that was something that I heard as well. Uh, I want to make it clear that we have a preference to explore that as well. So there's all the motions on there. I know it's a lot. Um, appreciate your support in that. Um, like I was saying, I, I think our planning process in general, um, you know, it continues to evolve and we continue to solicit feedback on how that can be improved. Um, what we're looking at is 10 10 planning and policy objectives here for this area. Um, it is a part of the city that's experiencing a tremendous amount of growth, will be experiencing a tremendous amount of growth, and certainly with the provincial policy regime and the growth plan changes, this is where uh, you know the province is directing that growth. Um, certainly there's billions of dollars of transportation infrastructure uh, in place here. It is uh, terminus of Girard Streetcar, it is the main TTC, and it is Danforth Go. So there is a real nexus there. But the way that we do growth, and I appreciate city planning's uh, comments, this is about unlocking that growth. 
and it, it, it means it's not just a given. There are a lot of things that we need to achieve in this area, and it's not a NIMBY community. That is not this, the sentiment that I get uh, from our neighbors in the community, but we want to see it done well, and we want to see it done right. And so uh, over the 77 pages of this document, that is very much the discussion. How do we unlock that growth uh, in a way that supports the community and maintains the and improves the livability of the area? Um, for me, when I look at it, the most important ones are, are really about that public realm, and we heard deputants speaking to that. How do we achieve a high-quality public realm, and I have motions to, ad to address that, as well as safer streets, um, as well as the community services and the, the space that's going to support the additional growth. And the other thing that we haven't talked about is the employment need. Uh, certainly, when you talk to the Danny BIA, DV BIA, um, DVCA, we all recognize that there's employment opportunities here being on that Danforth go, recognizing that there is very little AM capacity westbound in the morning on the TTC. Um, you know, we, we can grow employment in non-residential units uh, and spaces here in the East End, and, and that's certainly our intention, and there's policies in there to speak to that. Um, I won't be deferring this item because it is a... Um, it's a site and area specific policy. Again, it sub, uh, outlines objectives, as we heard from staff. Um, there are lots of opportunities to get down into the weeds on sidewalk widths um, and the specific pieces that are coming forward to the community. But this sets the objective based on uh, more than a year of consultation with the community, uh, with applicants to go forward and make sure uh, we're aligned with the policy framework and that we're doing something that makes sense for the East End. I would like to kind of close just by thanking all of the staff. Um, this has been a ton of work. Um, and certainly I want to thank George and Dan and city planning and Kyle specifically. Um, you, you're all very well known in our community. We're spending a lot of time together. Also like to thank Brian and uh, Dan Forth Church there. Uh, it's really the only meeting place that we have in the community and we're very grateful to be there all the time. Um, and then, you know, our staff in CSNF and Heritage Transportation Services and the SVN consultants. I think it's a thoughtful and comprehensive plan uh, and reflects all of the feedback from different people that we heard. Um, so with that, I'd like to move the recommendations and we'd appreciate your support. Thank you. Any questions of the mover? No? Anyone else to speak? No? Um, well, why don't we, is it okay if we take the amendments and the staff report as a package? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Um, members. Uh, this morning, I held a number of items in Ward 13. Uh, Councillor Wong Tam's back now. Yes? Sorry, I uh, We'll come back to that in a sec. If I could just, being a bear of very little brain, I like to do one thing at a time. Um, uh, item TE 11.27363391 Young Street and 3 Gerard Street East Public Art Plan. Councillor Wong Tam. Uh, yes, and thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'd like to, uh, first of all, acknowledge uh, and, and apologize for my tardiness. I was at Metro Hall uh, for the proclamation of the International if, Day. I, I know, just one moment, I know the staff are delighted that this big piece of work got done, but if we could keep it down a little bit, maybe go in the hall and do your whooping and hollering. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you very much. I just wanted to acknowledge that today was the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Um, and I was at Metro Hall earlier for the proclamation. I want to apologize for my tardiness here, um, but also acknowledge that that is a, that's a significant day and that we need to recognize it here as well. Um, I'd like to move the staff recommendations for item 11.27. On staff recommendations, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.29, construction staging area time extension 159 Wellesley Street East. Uh, thank you very much. I will again uh, move the staff recommendations. Uh, I do so reluctantly, but also recognizing that this particular site um, for development has been extremely challenging. It sits right at the south, yeah. south, uh, south yeah. east, southwest corner of Sherburne and Wellesley. Anybody traveling through the neighborhood will probably recognize that it is very uh, challenging. Uh, the cycle lane has been cut off. Uh, the pedestrian uh, activity has been eliminated on the, on the south side. Uh, and overall, it is, uh, it is not a, a friendly uh, uh, space for anybody who's moving through that particular uh, intersection, especially for vulnerable road users. Um, but I also know that it was a site that was deeply contaminated, and the developer did everything they could to try to advance construction. So, 
yes, we will give you the extension for the construction, but I just want to recognize we want you to construct as quickly as possible because we need you off the sidewalk and the public right of way. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 11.42, Safety Improvements, Gerard Street East and Pembroke Street. Uh, thank you. I'd like to move the staff recommendations and just acknowledge that although it, it looks like we're just receiving the report, uh, I do want to staff, thank staff from, from Transportation Services and especially Sean Dillon is that there were some strategic uh, enhancements that were made to the intersection which included pulling back the trees, installing some new signage and just overall tidying up the, that particular intersection. Uh, we didn't get to what the community wanted which is really a new pedestrianized signalized light so as we all want um, but I think that uh, the community is overall satisfied with the outcome and I want to thank staff for their hard work on that. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE, oh Lord, I've lost track, 11.41, uh, uh, vehicle width registration, first east-west public lane north of King Street East and west of Bright Street. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to move an amendment and the amendment will be asking for the additional, the, the installation of additional bollards on the north side and south sides of Bright Street at the entrance way to the laneway to prevent further damage to existing properties. I recognize that the staff had, uh, it had, uh, had, had investigated on how to eliminate um, the, uh, the, the vehicles uh, sort of cutting that curb um, and uh, their solution was to put up a sign and prohibit uh, large oversized vehicles from that narrow uh, uh, street. Um, but I think that you know we need to actually have a physical barrier, uh, bollards that could probably protect some of those properties. Uh, I know this has been done in multiple streets. Uh, it's not just a sign that's going to stop a, an oversized vehicle on a narrow street. Uh, we have to put up physical elements to say you are actually not supposed to be here and if you are going to be here then you're going to have to properly edge out onto this roadway and then do a right hand turn that's going to be more uh, succinct with a 90 degree angle it just is it's it's part of vision zero because actually in, in many ways it's about re redesigning the roadway to uh, to change the human behavior of drivers okay on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.42, Safety Improvements, Gerard Street East and Pembroke Street. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to move an amendment. Uh, this is an amendment the is... clerks have the amendment? I just did 4-1. I did 4-1, 4-2. Item 4-2. It's done. 4 two is done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's what I and, and now we're on 4 -2. No, we're oh, okay, right. So, I thank Sean Dillon in my remarks there. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. Four three. Uh, item four three is uh, ex is about pedestrian and as was uh, was is about pedestrian and traffic safety review at, on Sherburn Street. Um, I would like to move an amendment. The amendment is a little bit text heavy, um, but I hope that members of, uh, of the committee can, can recognize that there are times where we ask staff to, to evaluate a particular intersection uh, and the, the evaluation work is done and they come back and say nothing Nothing needs to change. Um, I think that uh, in this case, something does need to change. And I want to just highlight this street because uh, it's actually a street that everybody uses. You pass through it all the time. And there's probably a very good chance that as you pass through Sherburn Street, right as just as before you, uh, you, you hit Bloor, there's a little street called Howard and Selby. Uh, that street corner, uh, all three of those streets come together and they're entirely off jog. So they're offset streets. Um, and it creates a, a very unpredictable condition for those who are uh, cycling, uh, for those who are uh, walking and using mobility devices to cross the street. There was a particular time where we didn't have a lot of density, and maybe the density of St. Jamestown uh, was what we had, but, uh, but I would say that given the fact that we now have about three new development applications on the, on the west side and about five new development applications on the east side, a lot of those conditions have changed, including the fact that we've got young families and senior citizens all trying to make it across a street alive. And I note that in the staff report, one thing that they said was that they asked the Toronto police whether or not there were any collisions, and there was a history of collisions on that street. And the, and the response was no, there were no visible and, and rec recorded collisions, let's say that. Um, and uh, so therefore, the street doesn't need to be changed. And I dis disagree wholeheartedly 
uh, given the fact that we have had difficult streets, uh, unconventional streets with this offset um, uh, layout before, that have been uh, innovatively uh, uh, been investigated by staff and they came up with some solutions. A great example is that uh, uh, Soho, Peter and Queen Street, entirely offset, lots of pedestrian activity, vehicles turning right and left all the time, and you have a 24-hour streetcar line. And after many years and many attempts by Councillor Vaughan and I'm sure Councillor Cressy, they made it work. But I also know that staff had come back previously and said nothing needs to change. But they did make the change. So I'm going to in suggest that it's not just the staff that will review this intersection, but let's bring in community members, let's bring in the developers and their transportation experts who all were part of the development application, who all recognized at every single community meeting, the community said, can you fix that intersection? So we're going to take another um, attempt at reviewing those options, and I hope that when we come back, uh, when staff come back in June 2020, they will have an option that will say we're going to implement some physical changes as opposed to nothing needs to change. Thank you very much. Thank you. And questions from the mover? Anyone else to speak? No? Uh, on the amendment and the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried, and I believe you have one more. Am I right about that, or is that no? That's all of them. Okay, uh, Councillor. Sorry, Mr. Speaker, I was waiting on Councillor. I've been promoted. Sorry, Mr. <laughs> Chair, I've been waiting. I, I had waited uh, to, to pass item TE eleven point four seven four, Councillor Wong Tam, and if I could oh, do so seven? now. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. I'd like to move. I'd like to move the staff read, recommendations. Let me just get it like on the record. Uh, item TE 11.47, mid block pedestrian traffic control signals, Queens Park Crescent, West Queens Park. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd like to move the staff recommendations and just j just for the benefit of, of the committee and those in attendance, this will introduce three new traffic control signals on, on Queen's Park. This is a walking neighborhood. This is in the middle of the University of Toronto. It's in the middle of the legislative building that has very few connections to or, or safe connections from the legislative building and university buildings around this area that I think five years ago, if you drove a car on it, you realized what it was. It was a small highway through the downtown of the city. The width of the road, the speed of the road, the lack of traffic control signals. Um, but you'd also notice that, that pathways just ended at the road. And so the expectation was pedestrians would have to play chicken with traffic and run across the street. Well, it was Councillor Wong Tam that first decided to break this notion that we couldn't slow down traffic around Queen's Park. And I just wanted to make sure she was here so I could thank her for that. Because these additional, um, these additional traffic control signals were only made possible from those early interventions. Uh, you'll see the community associations are all in support of this, the university itself and the, uh, the, the student governments are all in support of this. This will make life safer for the 100,000 students and faculty that go to the University of Toronto on a daily basis, as well as, um, as, well as the, the thousands of employees and, uh, and members of the public that go to Queen's Park on a regular basis to uh, both make our lives a little bit more difficult here at the city and, uh, and, and can sometimes make a big difference in people's lives. So I would like to thank Councillor Wong Tam and staff for putting this forward. I look forward to seeing it implemented. Thank you. Questions of the mover? No, to speak, Councillor Cressy. Uh, just very briefly, I'd like to echo words of praise to Councillor Wong Tam and Councillor Layton and state that I, I see this as phase one. Phase one is the improvement of pedestrian safety with these crossings, and phase two down the road is the permanent pedestrianization of either the westbound or the eastbound section, I would say the westbound, to turn it into public realm. That's phase two, and I have full faith that Councillor Layton's going to get it done. Maybe, maybe we can get a letter someday. Um, yes, and for those of us who uh, enjoy going to Queen's Park to have a frank exchange of views with the prov provincial government, this will uh, make it, we'll, this will facilitate that as well. Make it less painful on your way there. Absolutely. Okay, um, so on the, on the item, all those in favor, opposed, carried. 
Councillor Bradford, you had one we could clean off? Yeah, uh, 11.3 um, through, the, through the chair, just move the recommendations. Okay, so uh, that's uh, 1627 Danforth Avenue, City Initiated Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Applications Final Report. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay, I need a motion now to introduce two new business items. Uh, three? No, just two. Sorry, I'm Two. Uh, 1172 and 1173. Councillor Wong Tam, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay, back to our timed items. Did you, you, had, you added those first? Yes, I did. Yes, yeah, sir. And they're they adopted. Voted on. And they're adopted? No. No, not yet. They're just adopted. They haven't been circulated. Sorry? We're not there yet. There are uh, quite a number of decadents on it. Yeah. Um, so we decided to hold off on 11.5 until Councillor Bailao is finished with her announcement. Uh, so that takes us to TE 11.6, intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, Inclusion on the Heritage Register, alterations to a heritage Mr. property. Chair, yes. Connected to 11.5 if we want to hold them both. I believe it's the same item. They're um, connected to each You're other. You're quite right. Uh, Croatia? Yes, it's Croatia Street. Okay, thank you for catching that. You saved me making an embarrassing error in front of all these people. <laughs> Um, item TE 11.7, intention is, the, no, that's Adelaide, okay. Intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, 445, 447, 449, 451, and 453 Adelaide Street, intention to designate, yes. Uh, this includes uh, advice from the Preservation Board as 7A. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Cressy. Uh, I'm happy to move the staff recommendations. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.8, intention to designate under part four, section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act 38 Camden Street. This also includes an item A, which is advice from the Preservation Board, Councillor Cressy. Uh, again, I'm happy to move the staff recommendations on this item. Okay. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.9, alterations to Heritage Properties Authority to enter into Heritage Easement Agreements and designation under Part 4, Section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act, 301, 303, 305, 309, 311, 315, and 319 King Street. I have some deputants listed. Uh, note that we will be considering the advice from the Preservation Board as 9A at the same time. Um, Philip Goldsmith. Hi, Philip. Okay. Uh, we may need some audiovisual assistance. Good morning. My name is Anique. Hey, you're not Philip Goldsmith. No, I'm not. My name is Anique Forstall. I'm also listed as a deputant today. Okay. So are you switching the order? Do you each want five minutes? How do you want to do it? I, I will require less than five minutes, so I'll just make a few comments and then I will pass the floor to Mr. Goldsmith. So we'll give you five altogether, is that fair? Um, I, I'll need my full five minutes. You'll I was going to say he'll need his five. Okay, I'll so. give you five and then you don't have to use it. Go Perfect. ahead. Perfect, thank you. So we are here today on behalf of the applicant owners of 301 to 319 King Street, which owners include Clareville Holdings Limited. I'm joined today by Mr. Philip Goldsmith, who's a very well-respected heritage architect at Philip Goldsmith Architects. Uh, this, the applications for the recommendations in respect to alterations of heritage properties that are before you today are in relation to an application for zoning bylaw amendment that was made back in 2013 and the lack of decision was appealed to the local planning appeals tribunal in 2017. Settlement with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment application will be going before uh, the city council in camera. So that is not what's before you today. Today it is only the heritage alterations and the recommendations uh, in that respect that are before you. There are seven recommendations and we are requesting that you recommend their adoption in full. 
The recommendations that are before you are the hard work of years of cooperation between the owner uh, and their consultants and city staff. They have spent a very long time working together to do their best to accommodate the heritage issues on these properties, and we feel that we have uh, achieved a very good solution. And so I will pass the floor to Mr. Goldsmith, who will tell you more details about the heritage properties and the recommendations before you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for Nick? Nope. Okay, moving along. Mr. Golds, Philip. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm going to take you through a very quick uh, slideshow uh, to uh, illustrate the proposal uh, for this property. So the property is located um, mid-block between uh, Bay Street and, um, not Bay Street, University Avenue and Spadina Avenue on the south side of King Street. Um, as you can see in this image of King Street, it includes a number of heritage buildings. There are four heritage properties between 301 King West and 309 King West. Here's an image of the buildings in question and I'll quickly describe uh, the approach. So starting with 301, 303, the entire front of that building will be preserved. The vacant lot will be filled in. Gabby's will be preserved uh, and built uh, with a setback to uh, the podium level. Uh, 315 will be preserved. This newer building will be removed and replaced at three stories. And 319 will be preserved. 319 is one of four units of um, what is called the Hughes Terrace. And those four units bridge two projects. The project from 321 to the west is under construction now. Here we have um, an elevation of what is proposed so that you can uh, follow along. Again, 301 preserved. There will be a new infill project here at three stories. A third story added to Gabby's at 301. Sorry, sorry, one moment. Councillor Matlow, you can't leave. Councillor Matlow, I need you in your seat for a quorum. Sorry. Please continue. Sorry, at 305, uh, that'll be set back. The full elevation of this will be preserved, a three-story infill elevation, and the full elevation, including the sloping roof of 319, will be preserved. Here you see it in context with the project to the immediate west that's under construction and already approved. I'd like to spend just a minute on the ground floor because there were some comments that came up at the Toronto Preservation Board about the lack of uh, restaurant uh, retail at the ground floor. We've shaded in on the ground floor all of the retail restaurant area. Uh, as you can see, it represents about 6,580 square feet. This would be the equivalent of the existing restaurant at 301. So you can see that it could be two larger restaurants or four smaller restaurants and the owner is very interested in preserving the restaurants in the area that has become over the years known as Restaurant Row. Also along the street there are existing patios and we would seek to uh, continue with those patios on King Street. As you go up the building, um, the, the green area represents the representation of the historic buildings that uh, have return walls that go into the project so that they have a three-dimensional presence on the street. And when you get to the fourth floor, you can see the, the roof of 319 uh, comes above the podium level, but the footprint of the tower is set back substantially from uh, all three sides uh, that face the street and face adjacent neighbors. So to the west, 3.14 meters, to the east, 11.9, and from the street, 6.1 meters. That plan tapers outward as you go up the building, reaching 11.5 meters to the west, 10 meters to the east, and three meters to the north uh, facing King Street uh, at the uh, sixth floor uh, above the uh, podium. So here's the full streetscape. That's that represents uh, not just our project, but the various projects under construction and approved. And you can see how our building will fit into that emerging streetscape with the three-story podium of the commercial row preserved. Here's some elevations that illustrate the same point from ground so that you have a sense of uh, how it will feel 
at grade. And as you can see that with the infill creating a full three-story uh, street wall, you'll have a fairly typical commercial Main Street approach all the way along this section of King Street, which includes all of the heritage facades that exist today. And that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the deputant? Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you. So the item in front of us here is related to the heritage properties, but I see you're presenting details of what I understood to be a without prejudice settlement. Is that correct? A settlement offer, not one that's being approved. So currently we are, some of this, the street, streetscape images and things are showing the overall development, but today the focus is on the heritage elements that are to be preserved and the alterations to those properties. So that is what's, what's before you today. It's not the without prejudice details of the settlement. And the, and the reason for that uh, showing the rest of the project is just to show uh, the context of the heritage buildings as, as represented in the new project. So I guess my question would be, because it's very difficult for members of this committee and council to sign off on heritage details without understanding the full comprehensive picture, given that you shared some of this today, should I be led to understand that this will be a, the settlement offer will be made public? Because we're being shown some of it, and you've just alluded to a settlement offer going to council, and you've shown some of those details, but not all. And we're being asked to consider some of this, but not all. So the only thing that's being put forward today are the, again, the elements that relate to preservation of the facades. Yes, preservation of those facades forms part of the overall development, but the overall development and terms relating to a settlement uh, in that respect, again, we'll be going in camera before council. So, that, so this is this is just in respect of the the facades that are being preserved, the heritage easement agreement that's being recommended. Um, that's I, I understand what's in front of us, and I, I watched the presentation in terms of the components in front of us that aren't um, that are new to this in committee. The question is, is there a willingness to allow the settlement offer to be made public, or not? I am not in a position to advise in that respect Okay, those are my at this time. Those are my questions. Thanks. I'm sorry, Councillor. The reason for showing what we did is it's in the Heritage Conservation District, so there are certain numbers that apply yeah. through that. Yeah. No, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Those are all my questions. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Of the no? Thank you. Questions of staff? Um, is it staff's understanding that, as we heard from the proponent, that a without prejudice settlement offer is going to be coming forward for consideration at council. Um, my understanding is that a um, letter was, as was stated by the council for the applicant, that uh, a letter is coming for has been sent to the city solicitor, and it is our duty to report. So that will come to the next meeting. Okay. So, in front of council at the next meeting, based on uh, as the applicant has shared, this a full. Uh, a pro full proposed settlement offer will be considered. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen the settlement offer letter, but if that's what isn't contained in the letter, then we will report to the next council meeting. Okay. And then my other question is, on the heritage property uh, properties item, which is in front of us, I understand that heritage preservation services are in support, but the preservation board is not. Is that correct? Uh, it's correct. The, the Toronto Preservation Board supported the designation of 305 King Street West, but they didn't support the conservation strategy as part of the redevelopment. Okay. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Seeing none, speak. Councillor Cressy. Uh, so I'm going to be moving, um, moving this forward without recommendations to Council. And the reason being that, as we've heard from legal to the applicant, a settlement offer, which includes heritage, uh, has been submitted. As we've heard uh, from city legal, uh, it is their responsibility to put that in front of council. Given the years of work, but also given the concerns raised by the preservation board, I'm not comfortable to sign off on one component of a broad potential settlement without being able to collectively look at all the details 
as a package. And so I will be moving this without recommendation so that we can consider the entirety of what's in front of us uh, at that one time together. Thank you. Very wise. Anyone to ask questions of the mover? Anyone else to speak? Seeing none, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Uh, members, I'm going to ask for a motion to introduce TE 11.74, request for a Chinatown st study, Spadina Avenue and Dundas Street West. Councillor Layton, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Okay, the next item we have is item TE 11.10, inclusion on the City of Toronto Heritage Register 55 through 73 and 79 through 87 Niagara Street and an intention to designate under part 4 section 29 of the Ontario Heritage Act 61 through 69 Niagara Street. Uh, I have a deputant, Mr. David Kendall. Um, please note that we will be considering item 10A, which is the advice from the Preservation Board at the same time. Good morning, David. Please have a seat. Just five minutes. <clears throat> You'll have five minutes and you can watch your time on the clock over here to my right. Thank you for being here. Um, <clears throat> well, I think this is a happy day for me. And so there are a couple of people I want to thank, uh, several actually. Uh, one of them is all of you to be here for me to, or to hear me today. Certainly to thank Mike Layton and Joe Cressy, each of whom has pressed for this to happen. So I think what's going to happen today is what I'm thanking you for, which is the designation at least of the five houses which I have owned until September when I only own four. We sold the other one, but with a condition that the buyer would welcome heritage designation, and I believe that's happened. Um, Having said that, I'd like to just, because we're talking history, I'll just mutter a bit about history. Back 60 years ago, when I was 19, I opened my first bank account at the Royal Bank at Bloor and Bedford. And I met a man called Mr. Christie. He was, the ma he was the manager. Why did I meet him? I don't know. But, and why did we talk about it? But we talked about houses. Anyway, a banker, Mr. Christie, said to me, and I'll always remember it, how old houses have souls. So that's the situation. Uh, over the years, I've come to believe exactly that, that if they live over 100 years, they've almost acquired a life. They've rooted them to the soils and become something real and something part of our environment. So I'm in favor, totally in favor of towers. I believe in preservation of the countryside, the farmlands, the green belt. So I know Toronto has to go up, not out. Total believer in that. Having said that, I want, I visualize somehow that well, all these people that are going to live in the tall towers, they're, all, they're, go, they're going to look out of their 10,000 windows and they're going to see the straight lines of concrete and glass and metal. And then their eyes will fall upon these little works of art lying here and there that we must preserve. We've got three million people coming to the, their golden horseshoe over the next 25 years. Now is the time to preserve. As a result, I urge, of course, that you endorse the designation of R5. I highly urge that you uh, consider the, uh, the uh, moving, uh, the endorsing and moving into heritage designation the remainder of the street of the houses on the south side of Niagara Street, uh, which are about 15 houses, up to uh, Wellington. I highly endorse the idea uh, and urge that you also seek heritage designation, not just listing, of the uh, four houses, uh, num numbers 76 to 82, on the north side of Niagara Street, so that that whole street will become one beautiful sight for those 10,000 windows. That's the end of my tale. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those lovely thoughts. You have a question. Councillor Cressy. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, David, for being here. Um, this doesn't happen that often, so I just want to be clear. You are the owner of these properties, and you are proactively seeking to have them designated as heritage. Ten years ago, I applied, spent two days in the Toronto archives. Since then, I have begged and called, and finally, 
They have done it. And I, again, I want to thank, oh, I, did, I forgot to mention them. Uh, Liz McFarland and uh, Tamara Anton uh, Cartwright, each of whom have made it happen. So thank you. And, and just the, the houses you own, have you not also rented them at below market rates to ensure it's a livable neighborhood for people in the neighborhood as well? Correct. Our apartments, because uh, each of them is a, is a, two, is a two unit building, uh, we rent at $900 downstairs, free washing, laundry, um, and $800 upstairs. We've raised $100 since 1983 when we purchased. I'm moving. Or in. began purchasing. All my questions. Thank you. Yeah. If you want to know how I got the houses, I can tell you this, um, because I'm not a rich man. I got rich by accident. I can tell you this. The first house I bought when my novel won the Seal First Novel Award, $25,000 I got, and uh, I bought the first house, myself and my wife, Grisha. And then it came out in an MGM movie three years later, and I bought two more. I got $57,000, bought two more houses. That's how it all happened. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any members of the public who would like to top that? <laughs> no? Uh, seeing none, uh, questions of staff? No? To speak, Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you. And I will, with absolute delight, move the staff recommendations with immense thanks to our staff. Uh, and uh, I'd like to recognize the work that Councillor Layton did to get here. I simply punted over the finish line. But really, you just heard from him, and I'd like to commend and thank David. Um, this is, Councillor Luong Tam just said, can we give him the key to the city? And he's worthy of it. Not simply for the duty and care that he's taken with which to, um, to honor our physical history and heritage, but to preserve a livable neighborhood. As you've heard with not just caring for these homes, but ensuring that the homes are livable and affordable spaces for people. Uh, this is the spirit of our city encapsulated in the form of a property owner and a true gem to the city. So thank you, David. It is an honor to finally endorse your long sought after for uh, recommendation. Thank you. Um, I'm going to recommend, oh, Councillor Layton, you want to speak? Just, just very quickly, because the first time that, that Mr. Kendall came to my office to request uh, that I give a little bit of support and, and urging to our city staff to move forward, uh, I, I didn't know his story. And once he gets into it, I think all of, as, as everyone here has realized, he's a very, a, a very unique soul. And to know that that, that, that soul is going to live on forever on Niagara, is such a, a, a beautiful thing, and I think we should figure out a way to continue that story and to encourage others to, to follow that same path. Sure. Um, that uh, that that when you when you make and when you fall upon uh, wealth and prosperity, uh, you share it not only with uh, those that uh, you love uh, or those that you're able to live with, because um, they're. They're staying in, 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 in the space with you, but also you pass it on to future generations, and I commend you uh, for, your, for your dedication to that. Thank you so much. I'm going to recommend we record this vote. All those in favor, Councillor Cressy, Councillor Bradford, Councillor Fletcher, Councillor Perks, Councillor Longtam, Councillor Layton, Councillor Matlow. That is unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm told the press conference is still running, so we'll move on to... TE 11.11, alterations to heritage properties at 89 through, did I just do, no, these are other ones, 89 through 109 Niagara Street, an authority to amend the existing heritage easement agreement at 89 through, through 109 Niagara Street. Are there any members of the public who also note there is a preservation board report on this one as well? Are there any members of the public who wish to make deputations on this? Seeing none. Questions to staff? No. Councillor Cressy. Uh, I'll move the staff recommendations. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item TE 11.12, alterations to a designated heritage property 276 Forest Hill Road. Uh, there is a preservation board report here as well. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this item? 
Seeing none, questions of staff, no. Councillor Matlow. I'll move the recommendations. On the recommendations, all those in favour, opposed, carried. Item TE11.13, amendment of designating bylaw to correct legal description of 440 Unwin Avenue. Note there is a 13A, which is a report from the Preservation Board. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this item? Seeing none, Councillor Fletcher. Yes, this is uh, happy to move this, and this is the Hearn, and I'd like a recorded vote on this, please. Okay, on the Hearn, I'm going to vote. I'm going to be so pleased to vote on this one. All those in favour? Councillor Cressy, Councillor Bradford, Councillor Fletcher, Councillor Perks, Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Layton, Councillor Matlow. That too is unanimous. Okay, very well done. Uh, Item TE 1.14, application to remove five private trees at 801 King Street West. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Yes? Please come forward. Despite everything you've to been told, we're a friendly bunch. Sure. Grab a seat. Tell us who you are. Sit, sit down. Settle in. It, 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 just take your time. <laughs> take your time and settle in. Good morning. You my can name, tell us who you are. My name is Christina Martizan. I am representing the owners who are in favor of removing the trees, that is the five maple trees. Um, I, I just wanted to point out I have uh, provided some letters from our um, landscaping architect as well as the uh, letter from the secretary of the board with regards to reconsidering our application to remove the trees. Uh, uh, we've already planted nine um, trees in, uh, 10 trees actually in our property. Uh, in replacement for the five trees that are going to be removed. Uh, as you, you know, uh, those five maple trees are invasive species uh, and are being removed by, uh, in ravines uh, by the city. Um, and that those trees are actually planted on top of our uh, garage slab, which is uh, we wanted to prevent any damage, further damage. As of now, we have leaks in our garage slab, and if we keep uh, those Norway maples, then we, uh, there might be more cost for us to repair those uh, waterproofing membranes. And we wanted to so I'm managing the, the project as of now, and our, our plan is to make our, uh, our courtyard to be, as, uh, to be enjoyed by everyone, not, but not just by our uh, residents, but also the neighboring residents, which we share with the other buildings, which is the Niagara Co-op, as well as the Gotham, which is along the King Street. Um, so our project is not just like a, a minor project. This is a major project for us, and we want to be something to be enjoyed by, as I said, by everyone. So um, that's it, and thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cressy has a question of you. Oh. Uh, thank you for being here. I understand my office has been in touch with you because you applied for a uh, permit for renewal and the re reason being was to replant. The, the permit you applied for was not construction related to your underground garage. That is correct. Okay, so. Because we wanted to um, do um, spot repair to our garage membrane for now and then in so that it will take us at least 10 years before we could do a major repair to our membrane. Yes, but, so, but you're aware my office has spoken with you to say that the permit you've applied for is the incorrect permit for what you're trying to do. 
you, my office did make you aware of that, is that correct? Yes, that, I, okay. it is correct. So what is in front of us here is not the permit. Is, staff's advice is very clear that we cannot just remove these trees in order to replant trees. It is a construction permit that you must be seeking. Yes, but our, um, the repair for our membrane is not going to be now. It's going to be in the future, in 10 years. We wanted to prolong it as much as we can uh, for budget purposes. And uh, so what we're doing right, that's why we didn't do a construction permit. We just wanted to a removal permit for now until we are ready for the construction or the repair of the, those membranes. Okay, I'm just, my office has made you aware that, yes. that, is, that that is not possible at this time. Yes. Okay, thank you. Those thank are all my questions. Any other questions of the deputant? No? Thank you very much. You. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. If you could just check in with the clerk over here so that we can get your name on record. Right here, this gentleman I'm pointing at. Okay. Very good, thank you. Okay, I see none. Other questions of staff? No? To speak? Councillor Cressy? Uh, thank you. And uh, as the, I will be moving the staff recommendations because the application in front of us uh, is to simply remove and replant these trees. We have informed the, the uh, operators of the building that that is not the correct permit that's being applied for, uh, that we're happy to work with them and we will continue to, to ensure that it's following the proper process, but, the, the, but that the uh, application in front of us now for just a straight replanting uh, is not possible on the advice of staff because they are healthy. Uh, and so I will be moving the recommendations for that reason and we'll continue through my office to liaise with the applicant to uh, work towards the appropriate permit. Thank you. Questions of the mover, seeing none, anyone else to speak? No, on Councilor Cressy's motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Uh, oh, this is also Councilor Bailao's item, 11.15, so we'll hold that down. Um, item TE 11.16, demolition application 535 Vaughan Road. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, any questions of staff? No, Councillor Matlow. Well, welcome to the Toronto East York and City of York Community Council. Um, and I'm gonna be uh, uh, supporting staff recommendation three, which is an old City of York uh, bylaw that enables us to uh, impose a beautification plan on the site. I, I remind you, Councillor, that if you wish to change the name of the committee, you have to bring a procedural motion to Council 60 days in advance of coming to council for consideration. You, you would. <laughs> Very well, on the item. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Um, item TE 11.17, report of the cancellation of the Union Station sidewalk boulevard vending locations due to the closure of Front Street West adjacent to the north side of 61 Front Street West between York Street and Bay Street. Are there any members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, Councillor Cressy. I'm gonna to move to defer this for one cycle. As I understand from staff that the notifications uh, that were sent out were sent out late and may have only arrived yesterday. So I will be moving to defer this for one month. Okay, on the deferral, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Item TE 11.18. Refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 1090 Queen Street West, Dover Court Road, Flankage. I have a deputy, Randall Kerr. Are you Mr. Kerr? Hi, Randall. How are you today? Morning. So, Randall, you'll have five minutes, and you can watch your time on the clock over here to my right. There you go. Good morning, uh, councillors. Um, my name is uh, Randall Kerr. I represent the Beaconsfield Village Residents Association. Uh, and specifically in this matter, I'm representing the immediate neighboring residents uh, who are opposed to the, uh, the application for the uh, Boulevard patio. Um, our group has had eight years of interaction with the 1090 Queen Street operators, business operators. Uh, currently our communication is at a low point and uh, we, we've been trying to reestablish uh, communications through the uh, West Queen West the BIA. Um, main issues, noise, garbage, 
sidewalk blocking due to lineups late at night, uh, patron nuisance, vandalism, and violence uh, due to a lack of security at the at the Queen Street entrance. Um, the previous operator did have security, and at one point it was a little bit better, but now the, uh, the current operator doesn't think security is necessary. Uh, the, communication, uh, sorry, the community is also concerned about escalating gun violence in the area. Uh, two blocks east uh, uh, last summer, Brookfield Queen had a shooting. It was related to a uh, patio and bar license, uh, license bar uh, lineup um, a couple of blocks uh, east of this location and uh, just last week there was a shooting at uh, Queen and Dover Court uh, at the Dog and Bear I believe it was so it was less than 100 feet away from here so it's a, it's a very active corner at night and uh, we, we feel that uh, okay, the patio is just going to contribute to more more issues that we currently have and uh, we're asking that the Community Council deny this appeal that's it you have any questions those are all your remarks are there any questions Randall, thank you for your time today. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry, I didn't see you. Come on up. Yeah. Take a seat. If you could start by telling us your name. My name is Brian Donnelly. Hi, Brian. You have five minutes and you can watch your time over here to my right. Um, I'm the new uh, owner of this, um, this establishment. Um, opened up probably about three, four months ago. Uh, Could I ask you to move a little bit more close to your microphone? Yep. Thank you. Um, this is better? Yeah, much better. I can hear it. Um, I'm the new um, tenant uh, for the next door neighbors. We're at the corner of uh, Dover Court and Queen. Um, I opened up a pizzeria, a beautiful space uh, with three trees inside. We sell a lot of food. We're currently, honestly, we're working out some of the kinks with working some of our garbage disposal things. We have disposal seven days a week, um, pick up as best we can. Um, we do have neighbors who actually throw stuff into our garbage, what we're trying to dispute with. Um, the side of the building for the patio is actually something that, you know, we are a pizzeria first. We turn into a little bit of a bar at night. We do have louder music, um, but we're not a nightclub like the previous people. And I understand how there could be tension between the two things. Um, but we're a pizzeria. We're full every single night. And I've invited Randy and I've invited Vera to come by many times. Um, communication is definitely at a low and it's you know, due to a, a bit of a back and forth and waiting for this essentially. Um, noise violations and two different things that you know, we feel that we're in our right. Um, and I appreciate them contesting it as well, which is great. That's fully within their right. For the Boulevard patio, cap, like um, Boulevard patio, uh, we want to just allow people to come and use our patio, our community, grab coffee from across the street at new businesses like Roselle, um, have pizza, relax on the patio and do different things. So um, it doesn't need to contribute to the nighttime kind of atmosphere. I'm very open to suggestions if there's cutoff times or if there's different things for the community, if that is their biggest concerns is noise and violations or that kind of thing. So I'm open to kind of figuring out and working together on it because I'm looking to grow the neighborhood and grow greenery around the area and bring life back into like a soulless building, so. Okay, that's it. those are your remarks? Yeah, that's it. Okay, a question, Councillor Cressy. I just want to, for clarity, you describe yourself as a pizzeria, but you do operate as a bar at, until what time at night? Um, we sell food till two in the morning. Okay. So people come in after work, uh, we're a good industry spot. Um, across the street, Otto's Beer Hall, they're done at 11, so you know, a lot of them come over the, come over and grab some pizza. We sell, like, I have sales to show that I have pizza till 2 in the morning. Oh, I, I don't dispute, I, yeah, yeah. I just, you said you were a pizzeria, but you yeah. op, you do also operate as a bar, and as you said, with music well, it's, until... It's a restaurant. Oh. I mean, it's, it's, we sell food till 2 in the morning. And, again, selective words, maybe, but, again, we're a restaurant till 2 in the morning. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And are there any other questions? No? Thank you very much for coming down today. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to make a deputation on this item? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Cressy. Yeah. Uh, so I will be moving the staff recommendations, which are to deny this particular patio. Um, just a few words. This is a flankage patio. And as was noted, we have had particular challenges with this establishment over the last number of years, including in the last couple months. And 
a flankage patio adjacent to residential is a privilege, not a right. And we have a new owner here and it has not been a seamless transition in the last few months. And thus, if there is a desire to at one point uh, entertain that privilege of having a patio, we're gonna have to earn it. We're gonna have to earn back the trust after a lot of struggle. Uh, and that has not been done at this point. And so I would encourage the operator to work with my office in the neighborhood. This is the first we've heard from the operator to that outcome. But based on our experience, I will be moving the staff recommendations to deny. Are there any other members who wish to speak? No? On the motion, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application, or, or sorry, application, sorry, refusal of an application for a marketing display permit located at 2102 Queen Street East, Weneva Avenue, Flankage. Did I skip one? Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'm distracted. I'm trying to track down Councillor Bailao. Um, refusal of a Boulevard Cafe permit application located at 270 Wellington Street West, Unit 8 Blue Jay Way flankage. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this item? No? Councillor Cressy? Uh, I'm going to move to defer this indefinitely with the intention of bringing this back in time for patio season this spring. There is one section of the patio um, which is just a fraction out of our accessibility standards. We're going to work with the owner uh, to make sure that it complies, so I'll, we'll move to defer this indefinitely, and I'm confident we'll get this done for patio season. Anyone else to speak? Anyone else to speak? No? All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Um, item TE1120, refusal of an application for a marketing display permit located at 2102 Queens, Queen Street East, Weneva Avenue, Flankage. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak? Seeing none, um, Councillor Bradford. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. I am going to move the staff recommendations, please. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, opposed, carried. Okay. I understand that Councillor Blylau is literally just outside the room um, talking to some reporters. Uh, so we have two options now. We could wait a couple minutes for Councillor Blylau. Or we could begin item 1135, which has quite a number of deputants. And then break off. When and you get and we're going to be breaking at 12:30. So I'm I'm. What's the will of committee? Do Can we just see where she is. Sorry. Okay. So what the clerk is suggesting, uh, given. Just it's an option. What the no. clerk is suggesting as an option, given that both of those items have fairly long deputations lists and there's no prospect of completing either of them before lunch, is that we could break now and reconvene at uh, 1 o'clock. That's another option. Yeah? Someone want to move that? Councillor Cressy? All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. So the deputants all understand that. So, so, so that people can understand, uh, what we've decided to do is instead of having an item split where some people would speak before our break and then others speak after, we're going to have our break a bit early so that you can all listen to each other and we can have a more full conversation. We'll be back okay? One. Thank you. Yep. That was a good idea. Thank you for there's your suggestion. A, there's a, uh, there's I have a to work on some motions. <laughs> Well, we should get to them about Yeah, yeah, and your hair is nice short too. Okay, so let's see now. Um, so I have.